Earlier this year, I built a NAS with a Raspberry Pi that had 2.5 gig networking and I compared it to an Asus Store NAS. At the same time, somebody emailed me about this wire trusty SATA board that they were building. One of the complaints I had about my custom NAS was the fact that it was kind of hodgepodge and it took up a ton of space. Uh, it didn't perform as well as the Intel based one that I used from Asus Store but it performed pretty well and I, I said in that video that a one gigabit NAS was probably the ideal for a Raspberry Pi. And so today I have the wire trusty SATA board, which has four SATA slots in it for any kind of SATA drive. You can use 2.5 or 3.5 inch drives and I'll get into that in a bit. This board is really awesome and it's basically the exact thing that I wanted to build originally when I built my SATA NAS. This is one of a couple different NAS solutions for the Pi this one is all in one board. I'll get into the details here and show you some of the interesting parts of it. Of course, right in the middle, you have those four SATA slots and each slot carries power and data so that you don't have to have a separate power supply for this board. It gets everything through a 12 volt barrel connector or the 12 volt fan pin, just like on the Raspberry Pi CMIO board. It also has some of the standard ports like HDMI 2.0 so that you can have a display output. It has two USB 2.0 ports, although these ports are disabled by default because of the way the Pi OS is set up. So you have to enable that in your config file. And it has an ethernet gigabit port uh, that's right off the Compute Module 4's network NIC. The board also has a serial header for debugging. It has a real-time clock built in. It has a fan connector with a pulse width modulation chip so you can control PWM fans. It has a reset button and it has a micro SD card slot so that you can run either the compute module light like this without an MMC or a compute module with MMC. Uh, and on the underside, it has all the power circuitry and it has a chip here that's the SATA controller that's directly off the PCI Express bus on the Raspberry Pi. And this chip means that you're gonna get the full speed that you can get through the Raspberry Pi's Buy One PCI Express Gen 2 bus. And it's really compact. I think it's a hundred millimeters square and it has four mounting screws and they actually make this custom heatsink plate for it as well. So we're gonna assemble this all together and see how it works. So they sent me this whole kit which includes a case and they have two different cases. They have a case for 3.5 inch hard drives and they have a separate case for 2.5 inch hard drives. If you have 2.5 inch SATA SSDs, you can actually plug them directly into the board like this and you can plug four in, and um, this board is actually, in my opinion, best in this case, because it takes up less volume. You just have a little cube that's this size. And uh, these, these drives tend to use less power too. So this board, um, if you have big bulky hard drives for NASAs and things, sometimes they use a lot of power, and that can cause issues if you have all four drives. And I think that this board revision actually has a bug where if you have four high power drives try to power up at the same time, it can actually reset the board. The newer board versions uh, should have the ability to power up drives one by one instead of all four at the same time. But like I said, that's not a problem with these smaller drives, at least most of these smaller drives. You can get uh, 2.5 inch SSDs or even 2.5 inch hard drives in many different capacities up to eight or 10 or 12 terabytes. Uh, so for, for many people, this kind of board with these kind of drives would be the ideal situation. I actually asked for the 3.5 inch case so that I could test it with some hard drives because I think a lot of people that want to have a huge amount of mass storage on a gigabit network uh, might be interested in this solution and I'm gonna put that all together. Uh, so the first step is taking your Raspberry Pi compute module and putting it on the back side of this board uh, so you, you always want to make sure that these 100 pin connectors are lined up correctly in the correct orientation. And it's kind of hard to miss on this board uh, because of the way that it, it's outlined where you put the Pi itself. Once that's in, uh, there's actually a couple of pads that you can put on thermal pads so that you can have the heat transfer off of the Raspberry Pi system on a chip and off of the SATA controller into this giant heat sink which will keep the Pi cool. And orientation matters on this board because you want this little pad that pops out on the heatsink to touch the SATA controller. So I'm gonna put this on there and apply a little bit of pressure and then we'll screw down the four screws that hold it all together.
All right, so I have the, the actual board mounted onto the heat sink, and if you look on the side, you can't really see it that well, but if you look through the side, you can see that the heat pads are actually making good contact, so that's gonna be helpful for cooling. Even without a fan, this massive heat sink should keep things cool enough um, that there should never be an issue on this board. Uh, it also includes a fan in the kit, and this fan is going to keep the drives themselves cool. This fan is not really for the pie, it's for the drives. The pie is gonna stay cool through this massive heat sink on the bottom. Next up, I'm gonna to put together the case itself, and it looks like um, this, is, this is not a hot swap design for the 3.5 inch drives. For the 2.5, it's a little easier because you can pop the drives on and off of the board itself. For the 3.5 inch, they actually mount to the case, and then you put the pie into the bottom of the case. Uh, so we'll go through that process and see how it turns out. Okay. This case design definitely doesn't win any awards for uh, quickest setup possible but it's functional. It's not something that's meant to be changed out on a daily basis. I'm actually just gonna do three drives for now because uh, there is that spin-up issue that could happen with the board that I have and the fact that I'd like to have a little more space to work around these drives in the bottom. Ooh, it looks like there's still some there's still a little layer of film on here we get to remove. It's always exciting. This is always the best part, yes, of getting any new product. Ugh. Let's get this side on. One thing that this particular design doesn't include is any kind of shock mounting for these hard drives. So if you wanted to use this in a more permanent installation, you should definitely put it on top of some sort of rubber pad or consider using a different kind of case design if you're going to use giant hard drives like these. Uh, the next step is I'm going to start putting together the rest of this enclosure. And I need to look, I hope that I didn't just do something backwards, did I? Yeah, I just put on one of these two sides backwards. So we're going to redo that and, uh, oops. All right, I, it actually turns out I had these on the <laughs> completely backwards. The uh, back sides of these drives are supposed to be facing back towards, you know what? I just did this backwards the second time in a row. I'm gonna have to turn these around again. All right, I think that's right, finally. So it looks like the next part is I'm gonna put on this little cover for the bottom, which has a couple ventilation holes or speed holes if you're into cars. That was easy enough. And then the, the pie itself and the whole unit here with the heat sink goes onto the bottom. And there's a little slot where the reset button pops out. Uh, so again, the orientation of this thing matters too. The ports are all towards the back. So we can hold, actually before I do that, I just realized I probably wanna get the cables routed from the drives to the board. There we go. All right, so we got our three plugs here. I'm gonna get them into the board. And uh, I should probably put the micro SD card in now since I'm using a light compute module. If I don't do that now, it's a little bit harder to access it once you put this thing into the unit. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and flash uh, Raspberry Pi OS to one of these cards and uh, get it in there. All right, so I'm writing Raspberry Pi OS to a micro SD card. Then I'm gonna put that in here and then we can put the board in and uh, hopefully it'll just boot up and start working. So I have Raspberry Pi OS on here and I'm gonna put it into the case after I plug in these three drives. Plugging in SATA cables blind is not super easy. Okay, we got those three in. Okay, so our hard drives are connected. I'm gonna put this in here like so and we will screw things down. Now, if you have the fourth drive in, you might be able to tell that these cables are a little bit 
uh, tight in here. So that with that fourth drive, you might have to actually bend the cables a tiny bit uh, with this particular enclosure to get them all to fit in without, uh, without kinking too much. So I'm going to get these screws started here. All right, next up, I'm going to put the fan in and let me move everything over just a tiny bit so I have room for this. The fan goes onto this fan plate. I sent an Arctic F9 PWM case fan, which is a good size, probably won't be too loud. Uh, but you could, of course, use any four pin uh, PWM fan with this build since they are a standard. All right, so we got the fan mounted on the plate and uh, it's gonna go in here. So before I do that, since I want the room to plug this in, I will plug it into the board and it goes, can't really see it inside of here, but it goes onto the four pin fan header. This is not the most cable managed solution in the world for sure, but it should all be good in the end. All right, fan goes in here. What is it hitting? There we go. Okay, so the fan is in and the hard drives are in. I'm gonna put the top on the case as well with the vent holes in the back. Okay, top is on and the back as well, which has a lot of ventilation holes. And I'll show you how that goes right here. And it looks like the top actually goes on after this. So back first, if it actually goes in now, what's it hitting? Okay, there we go. And top goes like that. All right, that is the NAS. This is a pretty cool little build and it's it's very narrow too which is nice uh, there's two nice things about that one is you could actually put it in this way and it would look just at home uh, or you can have it vertically oriented and it would it would take up a little less space than a, a giant box like the one that i got from asa store uh, so it's a pretty cool design it is a little bit complicated and like i said you're not going to be hot swapping drives but uh, all the parts of this come apart so that you could take out a drive while it's on and pop on a new one. It's just gonna be a little bit awkward with all those screws. But let's plug this in and boot it up and see what happens. So the minimum things that you need to make a functional NAS are power and networking. I actually have a 12 volt, five amp power supply, which will supply about 60 watts of power, enough to power these four drives for sure, and even some higher powered drives. And like I said, the board version that I have can't power up four high power drives at the same time right away and future board revisions will fix that problem. But this is a 12 volt, five amp power supply. You need to have a good power supply for any Pi project, but especially for something that has hard drives through the board like this. And then I also have a gigabit network plug here. Uh, this is coming straight from my home network and I'll plug that into the gigabit jack on the back and I'll plug in the 12 volt power. And it looks like everything is powering up. I heard the hard drive spinning up and the fan is on. And you can see the lights here too. So it has three green and three yellow. I think another bug that's on this particular version of the board is that the lights might uh, stay powered up even if there's no activity. Uh, so there's a few little things. Every project that I've seen for the Raspberry Pi, if you're building a complex hardware board like this, there's always gonna be some bugs you iron out. And this is one of the first revisions of the board that they sent me. The final version that's going to be shipped out to people is going to have a lot of these bugs fixed. And Maybe there will be some new bug too, you never know, but that's one of the hard things about hardware design is once you build something and ship it and have all the components placed, if you find a bug there, you can't just rewrite it really quick and have the fix out. You have to build a new batch and everything. So um, it's running and I'm gonna see if I can see it on my network here. All right, so I think that the IP address is this, dot one one four. So I'm gonna log in and um, Let's say LSPCI and C. So it, it hit. I can see that it's seeing this SATA controller. Now I'm running Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, the beta version, and I don't know if it has support for SATA built in yet. I actually worked on a pull request to make it so that boards like this will work out of the box with Pi OS, but I don't know if that's in yet. So I'm going to say LSBLK. And yeah, it's not showing those drives yet. 
So next up, I'm going to update the OS to the latest version and see if that fixes it. And sudo apt get upgrade dash y. All right, and this upgrade will take a little time. So I will use the magic of editing to get us to the point where it's finished. All right, so I'm going to reboot it. Looks like it's up. So I'm going to log back in. Uh, and then we'll do sudo ls pci dash vvvv to see. Uh, it doesn't look like it has that. It doesn't look like it has the actual uh, kernel module installed. So if I say d message, uh, it doesn't look like it's actually mounting any of the drives. And if I say lsblk, I see that there's no extra drives here. So it looks like until they actually uh, have that change in a kernel that's shipped out to end users uh, of Raspberry Pi OS, you'll actually have to rebuild your kernel like I've shown many times on this channel before so that you can use devices like this because the SATA controller is not supported out of the box by Raspberry Pi OS, nor Ubuntu, nor any version, uh, any distribution that's shipped for the Raspberry Pi yet. I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to make sure that they all have this supported by default because a lot of people are going to start using the Compute Module 4 with SATA controllers like this. So until that time, you actually have to recompile the Linux kernel and I've done that in numerous videos in the past. You can go back and look and exactly how that's done. Uh, but I'll also have a link down in the description to how to do it. And uh, I'm going to do that really quick here so that we can get this up and running and, and see all the hard drives. And the key is to make sure that the AHCI SATA support is selected here. Uh, this is actually supported in the latest versions of the Pi kernel. So if you actually follow my directions and clone it, this is selected by default. So you don't even have to go into menu config to set it up. Uh, but it hasn't reached end users with the shipping builds of PyOS quite yet. So I'm going to save this and exit. And then I'm going to cross compile the kernel. And this will take a minute. And then I'll copy it over to the, the wire trustee SATA board. And it should hopefully boot up and see those drives. All right, so I copied over the new kernel and rebooted. And if I say lspci vvv, uh, now it is showing that it's using the kernel driver AHCI. Uh, so let's check that out uh, with lsblk and C. And look, there's our disks. So these are these are only 500 gigabyte hard drives. They're older SATA drives, uh, but they can work. And I'm not going to go through setting up a RAID array in this video or setting up Open Media Vault. I have that in my previous videos, which you can see links to all those in the description. But this is a pretty nice hardware package for, <laughs> especially compared to the, the Pi setup that I had, uh, for any kind of NAS that you're going to build. Um, it's also interesting to see their, their design, which is even smaller for the, the 2.5 inch drives. So it's a pretty cool NAS. Um, I, I like the, the enclosure. It's a little bit finicky putting it together and you should probably triple check before you screw in all the hard drives, which way they go. Uh, but especially if you get the 2.5 inch version, that's even less of an issue because these just plug straight into the board. This is definitely the best NAS solution I've seen built for a Raspberry Pi. And it's definitely in the spirit of some of the older, um, older NAS in a box type of solutions for single board computers like the Odroid Cloud Shell or the Helios 4. And um, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Right now it's, in, it, it's not yet available, but it, it, they're hoping to start making it this year. And you can see it on Crowd Supply and sign up to be notified when it is available. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Uh, thanks so much to Wire Trustee for sending me this review unit to, to test it out, see how it works. Uh, verify some of the bugs that they have, and, and also uh, just show other people what's possible with a little bit of imagination building this case and, and putting everything together. And I'm really excited to see where they go with the next revisions, if they can get those bugs ironed out, and maybe if this is successful, what they could do next. Maybe put in a PCI uh, switch and put in 2.5 gig networking, or have even more drives possibly. I'm going to be reviewing some other really cool CM4 boards, so make sure you subscribe to see all that. And until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.